Hello everyone, we're back with a new Behind the Window program. In this new program, we will introduce our KP-130 CNC machine to you. As you know, we currently have the KP-110 pneumatic press and the KP-180 hydraulic press. Finally, we are now offering our new CNC controlled press for sale. I will first discuss the technical specifications of the machine. Then, our technical service technician, Mr. Hamza, will assist me, and we will perform a demo operation here. Yes, our CNC corner press is a fully CNC-controlled machine. In our previous two machines, the KP-110 and KP-180, the blades that performed the pressing were manually adjusted. However, in this machine, the blades and the rear mechanism where the profile is supported, as well as the rear fork, move according to the values entered into the CNC control. Our machine has two presses. These presses are located on both the left and right sides, and each has a pressing capacity of 3.5 tons. There are two vertical clamps on the machine to secure the profile. There is also a centering piston that grips the profile from the center. During this process, it rises and presses the frame from the inside, preventing the profile from moving. The movement of the blades is entirely powered by DC motors. The pressing process is carried out by a pneumatic mechanism. As you can see, we have a profile sample here. The wedges, as we call them in English, are mounted into the channels of these profiles, as you can see. Then, the blades of this machine are fixed in place using the centering square by resting against the fork, and the pressing process is carried out. Now, I will ask Mr. Hamza for assistance to demonstrate the pressing process. He will show you both how the program is set up and how the pressing process is performed. Mr. Hamza, I kindly request your assistance in this matter. Yes. When we first open the machine, we see three options. Load Profile allows you to load an existing profile. You can scroll down using the down arrow. New Profile allows you to enter a new profile. Below that is Change Profile, which allows you to change the properties of the existing profile. We will now enter a new profile by selecting New Profile. We've selected New Profile with the OK button and entered it by holding down the Enter button. Here, there is an angel code where you enter the name of the profile. We press enter and write AKPA using the number keys. Then confirm with enter. Below that, there is the profile code where we enter the profile code by pressing enter. For now, we can write 123 since this is a test. Press enter again to confirm. Below that are the squares codes, where you can enter the customer's name. You can also enter the frame code. You can leave it blank if you want. Yes, we will skip this part. The most important part is the enter values section. Here, you will enter the profile's measurements. Press enter to enter this section. First, the L1 measurement appears. We take our caliper for the L1 measurement. We need to enter these values accurately. You enter the distance of the hole where you will press with the wedge. You enter the place where the blade will press from the edge of the hole. We come to 32.42 here and move to the side with the arrow. We entered 32.4 of 32.42 and press enter. 
we moved down one line in the program. Here, S1 appears. Now, measure the width of the wedge here. 25.5. This is the inner width of the wedge. We return here and enter 25.5. We press the down key again to move to the next parameter, L2 parameter. This time, we enter the opposite value. We enter this here. This time, we enter this here. 32.2. We press enter again. We enter 32.2 and press enter. We move to the next parameter, the S2 parameter. The S2 parameter is also the width of the wedge here. Since both are the same, we can enter the same value. 25.5, press enter. Move to the side, enter 25.5. Press enter and move to the next parameter, the D parameter. Let's explain the D parameter as follows. When we place the wedges, if the surfaces where the blades will press are not on the same plane and one of them is on the inside, you need to enter the height difference between the blades. Since our blades are on the same surface and profile plane, we do not enter any value here. We can move on to the next parameter. SC1. The SC1 parameter is the inner width of the slot where the wedges are inserted, which is 26. We press enter here. We move to the side with the OK key. We enter 26, press enter, and move down one. SC2 is the width of the slot where the other wedge enters, which is the same as ours. So we enter the same value of 25. We move on to the next parameter. The Z1 parameter is how the wedge we placed is positioned in the machine, depending on how you position the wedge in the profile. This is where we enter the measurement of the center point where the first blade will press from the bottom. However, we need to be careful here and subtract half the thickness of the blade to find the center of the blade. Now, I'm roughly measuring the center under the profile. We're currently measuring 9 millimeters. Since our bottom dimension is 8 millimeters, we need to subtract half of that from 9. That leaves 5. So we will enter the value 5 here and press enter for Z1. I entered the value 5. This will center the blade. I press enter again and move on to the next one. Here we have the Z2 value. Z2 is where the second blade will be placed. In the same way, we measure the center from the bottom of the profile. We get 44. The upper blade is our 4 millimeters blade, and we will move out 2 millimeters from there. We will enter 42 millimeters here. I pressed enter, moved to the side, and entered the value 42. I pressed enter and moved to the next parameter. The ZF parameter is the support profile we have at the back after joining these profiles. We have a profile support fork. We are determining the position where this profile support fork will be inserted. Since there will be a blade in each of the two channels here, we can place the profile support here. We measure this in the same way, centering it at the bottom of the profile. 25.3. We can say 25 in our profile support here. We will remove 4 millimeters and 2 millimeters. We will go to 23 millimeters and press enter. We have reached 23 millimeters and pressed enter.
we are moving on to the next parameters. The SP parameter is our last parameter here, where we enter the thickness of the material on the side where the blade will press against the profile. We entered 1.5 and pressed enter. When we go down to the next one, we see that we have returned to the L1 parameter. The profile parameters are now complete and we have made the adjustments. Now we need to calculate. We calculate with the F4 key. If we have entered an incorrect parameter, it will give an error. If there are no incorrect parameters, it will proceed to the calculation. We press F4 and it says save profile. We click OK. And since we have not made any incorrect entries, it is creating our profile. From here, we will call up the profile. The motors will take their positions and we will perform the pressing operation. Since we have entered our profile, this profile will come automatically at first and appear here as AKPA. If we want, we can press enter from here and select load profile from the data. Then enter the name of the profile we want. From here, we select the profile we want and want the motors to go to the desired motor positions. T is currently finding its own positions. It is going to the positions we entered. Yes, we have entered the necessary profile information. It has now found the motor positions. Our machine is now ready to press the profile. We are placing our wedges on the profile, and we are placing the profile here. We are adjusting the angle. I can show you from here if you want. We are compressing the profile with the yellow pedal. It has now compressed the profile. We perform the profile pressing operation using the white pedal. The process is now complete. We lower the pneumatic piston using the yellow pedal and remove the profile. That's all for the process. Yes, the surfaces are quite smooth and of high quality. There are no visible steps. Yes, the printing process was very successful. Thank you, Mr. Hamza. We will now move on to the question and answer section. If you have any questions, we will be happy to answer them. Thank you.